welcome to Audio Tree Live. It is June 1st, 2023, and as always, I am your host, Fingy. Uh, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, stay in the loop with all the amazing sessions we have going on over here, and tap into us on the streaming services, Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal. By now, you already know the drill. You're there, we're there. Let's hang out. But without further ado, I'm super stoked to introduce all the way from New York, we have a blood pumping hardcore band who also happen to be small dog enthusiasts. Let's give it up for Incendiary. Take it away. Shrek. Shrek. Shot in front of soaked in rain Reaping up and feeling it 
You broke the advance in between my 
energy. Damn. <laughs> There's one way to start an audio tree live set. I think I think you guys might have set a certain standard. I like that. Well, thank you. Yeah. And my guy, Brendan, over here, bro. It's so funny. People usually come in, you know, like getting their coffee, getting their tea, whatever. This guy comes and he's like, yeah, I'm going to need 10 water bottles. And it's totally cool. I can go out and grab some more. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need that. And honestly, I respect that a lot. I don't know <laughs> if it's if it's too personal to ask how many potty breaks we take per set. Oh, I'm a, I'm a big peer. Yeah, big I'm a big peer. peer. I can make it through a set without peeing, just to be clear. But Thank God. But during the day, yeah. I'm, well, a, I'm, I'm a big water guy. We're, I think we're all kind of big water guys, actually. Yeah, yeah. big on hydration. Hell yeah, h yeah. Big water fans. Every mm-hmm. damn day. No, I mean, even in the way y'all retune and kind of keep the ambience going, if you really needed to just bolt, I, I think you have it in you. But I, I, you're professional, you're seasoned, you don't need to go pee-pee on the spot. But I will say, if there's ever a little thought in the back of your head, it's like, okay. it's time, okay. I think I think you could do it, man. I Thank think you. you could do it. But uh, yeah, y'all just released your fourth LP. Congratulations. What, May 26th? Yeah, last week. Very sweet. exciting, very exciting. Um, and it's called Change the Way You Think About Pain. And that's a really blunt and gripping topic. I feel like musicians usually try to be very metaphorical in the way they address certain things. And when I even just saw the title, I was like, oh, so this is what we're going to get into. And I was I was wondering how, when you approach this idea, how you think people, the vast public, usually deal with pain. They don't, which is a big part of what the album is about, right? Like, I think this theme kind of came together over time when I was, like, putting the lyrics... Uh, rather putting pen to paper and kind of things started to unveil because I don't necessarily go in with like a premeditated plan, but this is kind of what came together. And I think a a big theme of the album is just around pain and paid avoidance and a lot of the problems uh, and personal struggles that we have individually and as a society kind of come from the fact that people are unable to deal with their emotions and deal with their problems head on, which I get completely. And um, the album explores a lot of, themes around that topic yeah yeah the pain avoidance was a huge topic and I was kind of as I was contemplating myself what do you think the societal and personal repercussions may be of said paid avoidance you know it's one thing to avoid I'll say it's one thing to avoid doing your taxes but then the IRS (laughs) is on your ass and that's not fun so do your taxes but what do you think is some of the major repercussions we see from people kind of ignoring this thing that really needs to be addressed. I think you see a rise in people living inside their own heads and the internal sort of uh, conversation that is happening all day, every day, 24 hours a day with most of humanity. And so I think it kind of puts people into bubbles and it's an isolating type of thing. And so as it pertains to the cooperation within any given society, it could be difficult when people are kind of uh, focused on themselves without thinking about the ramifications of their actions. And so I think it's a lot to do with um, kind of the driving some of the polarization that we're seeing in society and a lot of the mental health struggles that everyone is kind of seeing nowadays post-COVID. Yeah, and I think it's interesting too because when we think about that idea of people kind of focusing a little too hard on themselves, I think it's more so that they're focusing on their ego rather than their higher self. And I see a lot of people who are so caught up in their external and letting that define their ego and their internal. So they're so in flux if something goes bad at work or if your partner's upset with you or something, instead of having that personal grounding, you know, it's much harder to actually deal with the pain because your ego gets fed by, you know, these negative emotions. How have you and the rest of the band kind of found yourself in situations where you are trying to address your pain? How do you feel like you're able to find that anchoring so you're not necessarily catering to your ego, but more so your higher self? I mean, for me personally, like, the the lyrics and, and the writing that I do as part of the band is a lot of time I'm I'm writing at myself, Mm. almost in like a quasi self-help way, but without being like metaphysical about it. And so like, you know, meditation and mindfulness to me personally has been very helpful in my life as I kind of continue to explore how to get away from my head because I'm certainly not preaching with my lyrics because I struggle with all of these things too. And so a lot of this is just like um, reminders and direction at myself to um, get out of my own head and to focus on sort of what's now and what's present. 
Yeah, mindfulness, man, and intention as well. If I feel like if you don't approach things with certain intention, you don't, mm -hmm. you don't, you don't know what you're saying, so you just spew out something that's not even really preachable, like you said. But with with intention, this is y'all's fourth LP, which I know is a pretty rarity in like the hardcore scene to have four albums. So kudos to you guys. That's fucking amazing. Um, when you reapproach this, I know you guys are really trying to focus on refining your sound. How how did you approach this LP this time, knowing that that's a milestone, knowing, been, been around the block a couple times, being able to get that those reputations in of refining and defining your sound. When you came to this project, what was kind of your angle beyond just the concept of pain, but more so the execution of the record? Yeah, so I think with, with this record, you know, with, with some of our other records, there kind of like wasn't necessarily like a vision other than like to keep getting better and keep, you know, progressing as a band. But this one, there there kind of was a specific vision in like being aware that we're in, you know, aging hardcore bands going into our fourth LP, which you're right, that's kind of like a rare, rare territory. Um, you know, sometimes the expectation um, can be to get a little, get a little softer, get a little more polished, get a little more, you know, round the edges off and, and less less intense. And, you know, knowing that that might be some people's expectation, I wanted to, we wanted to kind of really swerve that and defy that and go the other direction, bring something harder, more aggressive, more abrasive in terms of the songs and the production, um, and, and really just kind of like defy that expectation and show that like, yeah, we're getting older, but like we are sharper mm -hmm. now. And I think it was, that type of um, that type of sound delivered with you know stronger songwriting. So we're always trying to progress there too, and have have the songs be more kind of like focused, complete thoughts rather than you know just a bunch of parts next to each other that sounds cool. Like we really try to have focused, um, complete thoughts in our songs end to end, and then deliver that more aggressively. So that's kind of that was kind of like the vision and, and mission going into this. Yeah, that's awesome. I th I think you make a really interesting point of yeah you reach a certain threshold and you soften the edges you make it a little more digestible and i respect the fact that you're like i see that yes that no was, that was it was literally just like that boom you're trying I to zig that. instead of zag you yeah. know Ooh, i like that well you think we can do a little more zigs no zags right now <laughs> and strum a little more yeah let's get some yeah. zigs let's get some zigs zig it up
haven't been able, I haven't got the pleasure to attend one of your live shows, but I've seen, I've seen some videos and there's some pretty gnarly stage piling, <laughs> some pretty gnarly stage diving. I was wondering if y'all had any stories of certain injuries or certain, not injuries, but something, something crazy. I think we've all probably got hurt, uh, not necessarily during our own set, but just in our many years of going to hardcore shows. Um, yeah, I mean, I usually get relatively thrashed um we just played a tiny record store probably like this size room yeah um and that was uh that was that got pretty rowdy so some of the scars that i'm bearing from today are from from that from uh tuesday night but uh yeah we've had we've had our share of uh you know bumps and bruises i haven't had anything like that terrible i just a lot of like slipping through bodies when you stage dive and just hitting the floor directly. Ooh, that's that, happened. That's smart. Yeah, I mean, everyone's sweat. It's like wet on wet, so you're going to fall anyway. And uh, sometimes if you jump into a too wet of a spot and no one's looking for you, you're going you're gonna to hit the floor. I got injured doing this just now in that first block. I oh, like, yeah? cut my finger open. Oh, gee. On, should we call we a medic? Yeah, I think, I'll, I think I'll be all right. I'll be able to power through. Hell yeah. That's pretty but, fucking hardcore, you man. You hurt your little finger, <laughs> yeah, but I you're mean, keeping it moving. Bloodshed, first song of the audio tree set. Hey. How, many, how many other bands got that going? Hey. <laughs> That's so funny you bring up the wetness, though. Like, I always thought, like, you're going to have to, there's going to have to be some strength, but I never considered. The, the skin moisture as one of the variables. Yeah, especially if you're, like, at a longer show that has, like, ten bands or, like, a fest or whatever, and you're, like, stage diving to the headliner, and you're just, like, sweating from sweating all day. Yeah. It, like, you don't think, but you could just slip right through like a greased yeah. pig. It's nuts. Or I was thinking, like, the people, maybe at the beginning of the set, people are up and ready to go, but by the end, they, they don't have enough energy and they, they can't lift. Possibly. I mean, it, yeah, it also depends on, like, what time you're playing. Like, if you're in the middle of it, it's pretty cool. If you're, like, going on at, like, 11, 30, 12 o'clock, people might not have the energy to carry you, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it's always worth it, though, yeah? Yeah. Or, you know, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fuck Playing it. live is, like, I realize it's somewhat ironic, but that, that, is, that a live performance is, like, our bread and butter and really, like, why we continue to do the band after uh so many years honestly that's kind of yeah. what it's kind of the gas that goes in our tank if you will yeah yeah i was reading that how you guys are very live oriented and it made me wonder like when it comes to the recording process is that something that's kind of dreaded and like ah oh, man we have to do this we can't be live or is that something where it's completely siloed and a different thing that you enjoy for different reasons there are very differing opinions <laughs> yeah. in this band. Let's run it. Let's run it. We're going to gab. I, I, I love recording. It's like my favorite thing. Mm. Because you get to like, like the songs that you've been writing for months and sometimes years, you finally get to like, all right, don't mess it up. Like this is going to be like the perfect version of this song that you've been working on. And to see it go from like just a riff idea or like a drum idea to a full song that you're recording. To me, that's like the best part of it. And I like playing live too, but I, I absolutely love recording. Mm, beautiful. Do we have any opposing thoughts? I really dislike recording. It's like my <laughs> least favorite part. Me and Dan have gone back and forth to this. Yeah. Um, only because like, you know, I get in, in my own head and like there's so many variables and you get option paralysis of like what's actually the best way to do something. Mm. But um, this last recording experience was probably the best we ever had it was like yeah. actually fun um will putney is like a friend of ours by now it's the second record we did with him he, he just gets us he makes it easy he knows what we're he knows what our comfort zone is knows how far he can push that mm. kind of knows what we're going for and really just like understood the assignment and it's just like awesome to hang out with so yeah. you know as much as i dislike that process will makes it very easy and he was the producer or recording yep, engineer? Yep, producer on the last two records. Nice. There's a psychology behind that of knowing where to Big get you. Definitely. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a skill for Beyond sure. Beyond just the technical aspect, having the ear and having the ability to kind of deal with the personalities and people and shepherd that, it is, it is, it is a skill for sure. It's, it's like, a, like an emotional resonance. Like he, like he gets us in that way. Yeah. So where you could we could like work with each other. It's not just like some band walking in off the street and then you know someone pressing a record. It's yeah. like there's this like camaraderie be between yeah. us that I think works really well. Yeah, that's beautiful. When you're trying to literally capture lightning in a bottle and yeah. get yeah. the perfect right. take, you gotta yeah. you gotta have someone behind the board. Just yeah, and he feel. cares like just as much as we do. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So he, he he feels like he he feels like he's in it with you. You know. Yeah. Shout also out, say Will. like at that stage when we're with Will, we're fine tuning everything. I love recording because that's when we hear what the songs sound like. Yeah. Because we've been a band for so long, and we do not practice in a fancy spot. It's a quarter the size of this room, concrete walls. We record our demos on a crappy handheld 
you know, audio recorder. Yeah. So we barely know what's even going on. You think you know. Then yeah. we go into the studio and we're realizing what each other are playing, <laughs> how you know certain rhythms are going. Which turns we out is no important. Clue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, apparently. So that's where write, the write that down. Road and we actually like hear what's going yeah. on, and it blows my mind every time. To be honest, yeah, so no, that's why I love it. Totally, that blew my mind too. When I remember uh, when I first started up here, some band came and they're like, "Wow." I can hear everybody. Yeah. And I was like, damn, yeah, now everyone has Behringer power plays and they're just tapped into each other. So do you think it's when you guys come up with an idea, it's like, okay, I got this drum riff, I got this guitar riff, whatever, and you guys just kind of freestyle it, you feel it, you think, okay, that's good. But when you go into the studio, is that the first time you really get it? Or do we like do a circle and do, here's the guitar part, here's the bass well, part? Well, we do that to a degree. And then, it, you, know, but like, you know, like I was saying, you think you know, yeah, right? But when you really get into the studio and you can hear everything and you're really picking it apart that's where you know personally you really hear the song and everything kind of sinks in but yeah. we do fine tune it as much as we can up and i think then. we spent we spent more time on pre-production on this album too which helps and i think that's the other aspect of a producer is like they're a good like they have the whackometer, right because yeah. like you're all in your own head and they're like actually that part sucks and you're like okay thank you for telling yeah, me that right. and checking me that so it's a good impartial third party to uh yeah, kind of like, like decision real maker. Like we always go in with like a complete record that like could be recorded as is. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, Will, especially this time around with that pre-production process, really made sure the songs were as strong as they could be, and then also as kind of like extreme and as aggressive as they could be, because that's what you know we were going for in this record. Yeah, he was driving the boat. Y'all were, or what, what was it? He was he was like in the one of those those rowing teams, and there's one person in the front like, come on, go. That's it's that's called Will. a coxswain. Really? Oh, okay. Coxswain. Yes. Why? Coxswain? I don't know. I don't know. We all learned something today. So, we some, some guy in 1640 called it that, and it's been <laughs> like that ever since. I think <laughs> this guy should be the coxswain. Like, yeah. that's, that's interesting. Anyways. Speaking of coxswings, I have nothing else to speak about that. <laughs> that's yeah, that's the worst transition ever. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, let's go into our next one. One, two. If you don't know what the product is, the product is you! You don't know what the product 
Incendiary, so much for being here. We really appreciate y'all for coming in, shredding, doing the thing you love to do. Uh, thank you to our crew for getting this done. We truly could not do this without you. And thank you guys for watching. It, uh, it takes a couple of viewers for us to do this, so we really appreciate it. Uh, again, make sure you subscribe to our channel, listen to us on all streaming services. By the time you are watching this, it's already out in the ether, so go fishing because this was some hot fire. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, my name is Fingy. I'll see you next time. Peace. All right, so you guys want to do it for real now?